Earlier observations revealed that water samples with detergent seem to take on a different appearance when placed on the surface of a penny than water samples without a detergent. For example, sample B's profile on the penny was lower and less robust when viewed from the side than sample A. You can see that in figure 1. To further explore the cohesive properties of water, I carried out an experiment to determine the number of drops of water I could place on the tail surface of a penny, and my hypothesis was that I could place more drops of water on the penny using sample A, or regular tap water, than I could sample B, or tap water with detergent. So to test this hypothesis, I would drop uh, samples of water one drop at a time from a measured height onto the tail surface of a penny, and I'd continue dropping the water onto the penny until the water on the penny actually spilled off the penny onto the table. I will record then the number of drops I can place on the penny before the water spills off, and this procedure will repeat, be repeated ten times for each water sample. A samples A and B in my experiment will include a device to ensure that I am dropping the water from a measured distance each time I place a drop of water on the surface of the penny. Drops of water will be loaded onto the tail surface of a 1995 penny. And this penny is approximately a millimeter thick and has a diameter of about 18 millimeters. And the approximate surface area of the penny is about 254 and a half millimeters squared. And you can see the calculation there. I will load drops of water onto the surface of the penny using an eyedropper or a syringe. And then I describe the dropper uh, very carefully here. And note that the assembled dropper measures uh, about 102 millimeters in length and discharges, discharges rather water at the rate of about um, uh, 0 0.05 grams per drop. And this estimate was based on five trials where I recorded the mass of 10 drops of water deposited by this dropper. Samples of water were loaded onto the penny from a measured height of 12 millimeters, and this procedure was facilitated by using a cut styrofoam cup, shown in figure 2. The cup was cut with scissors to expose an approximately 90 degree section as seen from the top view, and it was taped to the table so it wouldn't move around. You can see that in figure 2. It's important to show the apparatus. The penny was um, positioned inside the cup directly under the syringe or dropper, and this procedure minimized the possibility of wind currents affecting the behavior of the water on the penny. In addition, the apparatus helped to maintain the 12 millimeter distance from the tip of the dropper to the surface of the penny, but it should be noted that as the water piled up on the penny surface, the distance from the tip of the dropper to the surface of the uh, water on the penny actually changed. I cleaned and dried the penny thoroughly between each round of data collection, which included 10 trials with water samples A and 10 trials with water samples B. And I began with water sample A and completed all 10 trials before collecting data for water sample B. And in doing so, I avoided, I hoped, the contamination of samples within the syringe itself. And all trials were completed with the same dropper, the same tail surface of the penny, and by the same individual who was me. My results are shown in table one <coughs> and you can see that here. I have in two columns sample A and sample B, uh, the column without detergent and the column with detergent and I show the actual data that I collected for each of the ten runs and I also show down below the summarizing statistics, the X bar mean, the SD or standard deviation and the N which is the sample size as well as the range. My data show that my hypothesis uh, was incorrect. I predicted that I could load more drops of water sample A on the tail surface of the penny than water sample B. But on average I could load 4.2 more drops of water sample B on the surface of the penny than uh, water sample A. My hypothesis was based on the assumption that the drop size or mass for water samples A and B were identical and this assumption needs to be tested because it may be possible that that assumption is incorrect. To test this assumption, I quantified the drop size for water samples A and B by recording the mass of 100 drops for each sample. Samples were massed using an OHAS balance that measured to the nearest 1 one hundredth of the gram. The results of this test are shown in Table 2.
Table 2 compares the mass in grams of 100 drops of water, samples A and B, and sample A represents tap water, remember, and sample B represents tap water with detergent. My data show that it was wrong for me to assume that the drop size or mass was identical for water samples A and B. The water sample with the detergent, sample B, produces drops of water smaller in size or mass than the sample for tap water, sample A. The drop mass, that is grams per drop, is um, 0 0.052 for sample A and 0, uh, 0.024 for sample B. Note that my calculations for drop mass uh, of tap water in my procedures ranged um, um, a little bit for 5, 10 drop samples, but this agrees pretty well with my results reported above for 5, 100 drop samples of tap water. My data indicate that if I loaded 24.2 drops of tap water on the tail surface of the penny, as in figure, uh, or the table one, that mass would approximate 1.26 grams. If I loaded 28.4 drops of detergent water on the same surface of the penny, in table one, that mass would approximate 0 0.67 grams. In essence, then, my original hypothesis that I could load more drops of water sample A on the surface of a penny than the other water sample B is incorrect because the drop size is different for each sample. When drop size is accounted for, it is clear that I can load more mass of water sample A on the surface of the penny than water sample B, which is what I meant. In my discussion, it is clear that when detergent is added to water, the cohesive properties of the water actually change, and this is manifest by the decrease in drop mass from 0 0.2 or, or 0 0.52 to 0 0.24 grams per drop as well as the total mass of water that can be loaded onto the surface area of a penny. It appears that the detergent must interfere with the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules so as to reduce the cohesive interactions, which also diminish the surface tension. It would be interesting to determine the relative effects of different concentrations of detergent on drop size or mass of water and hypothesize that there must be an optimal concentration beyond which the drop size or mass of water does not change. Below, I show examples of drop sizes for water samples A and B as recorded after exactly three minutes in contact with um, paper toweling. Note that the surface area of the absorption for each drop, and this was completed using a paper towel sample that which was raised off the surface of the table in a room where the ambient temperature uh, was 25 degrees C. And the figure here um, shows that pretty well.